Time now for the Voice of the Land on the Big Play Network with your hosts, Kevin Arnold and Always Positive Jay. Boy, I mean, the conversations before this show are just just epic. They make you feel good. They make you feel better. And honestly, I think all three of us on this show and a lot more people around us have gotten to the point where we talked about in the first half of the Browns season, and that is not going to let the team ruin your day. And, hey, I'm wearing my Manchester United kit. They got the win at the death, at the last minute. Garinacho with like a young stud playing soccer and yeah i'm talking european football right now not american i'm just glad you pronounced his name because i saw you tweet and i sat there probably for like 10 minutes like i have no idea how to pronounce this dude's name i wanted to bring it up on the show and i was like oh you're dude i'm like yeah i don't know how to pronounce his name i mean that's that's what you do that's what you're supposed to do when you bring on a sub you know you're playing a lower tier team in the premier league a team that you're supposed to beat even though you're on the road you're in their house they played a little bit better than expected this year and you know you're supposed to win you didn't play well enough you got the three points still yeah you're still in fifth place but you're you're only three points out of fourth instead of being five points so hey going into the world cup break feeling pretty good about manchester united so you they know kept I'm, things in reach your that team they kept things in reach and you now they wa- are uh, this other team that we're watching say I, I they keep things in reach today did, I they, mean, did they make the playoff hopes any better for us? I mean, all those fans that traveled down to Miami was it a show for them today? I, I, Hell no, it was terrible. I mean, I felt so bad because scrolling through Twitter before oh, that yeah. game, I mean, you would have thought it was a Browns home game. Like, and I, I heard that there was a, a lot of people going, but you hear these things, and then people don't make the trip, mm. or maybe plans got changed around, and, and hopefully everybody's doing okay down in Florida with that hurricane that hit uh, down in South Florida. You heard a lot of people were going, but you don't always know until you actually see it. Well, the Browns fans showed up. I don't know if the Browns players I, showed up. The defense sure didn't hey, show up. But don't worry, guys. That music is playing in the locker room, oh, yeah. and they got different I mean, vibes. They got a good vibe there. Oh, the music's boy, guys. Going. Oh, we're going to get into all of that right here <laughs> on The Voice of the Land. Always positive Jay across the table. Somewhere in the stratosphere, although there was a profile picture on Facebook. I don't know how a picture was ever caught of audio. <laughs> what Jarvis was to Iron Man audio is to the voice of land. His human name is Peter Telpe is the producer extraordinaire behind the proverbial glass. I haven't said that much lately. I don't think I need to because what I don't I don't know if he's behind anything because I don't know where where it is. He's in is space. it it? He's there, he's there, he's everywhere. But I, I'm telling you, there was a there was an update on Facebook that Peter Tellup changed his profile picture, and it was just in that circle. There was a there was a face. Yep. I, man, He's if I got could, his sim, what do they call it? The symbiote body, a symbiote body. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, I don't know. But <laughs> Peter Tellup's here. I'm Kevin Arnold. We are the Voice of Land. We are your big play. Brown's post game show. As much as we don't want to talk about it, you have to, and that's part of the job. We are brought to you by Vector Technical. They'll get the right person in the right job the first time. Thank you so much to everybody tuning in on Twitter. I have not shared Facebook yet. I'm behind. We had a great open to the show. I will get that shared. If you guys have comments, please leave them in the chat or in the comments below if you're watching us. If you are tuning in late throughout the week, you're listening to the audio, Google, Spotify, Apple, just Reach out to us at Always Positive J at Kevin and Seven at LPV Productions. We'll, we 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 we'll, always say this. We will tweet back at you. We will oh, talk sure. to you, and we will have a legitimate conversation. And if you have a different opinion than ours, we're not going to call you an idiot and say it's dumb. We'll actually, you know, we'll just respond like you know humans. And yes, we have talked about trying to get a phone line to have people call into the show. You know, we've put more effort into trying to get a phone line. It just hasn't happened. We put more effort into that than the Browns put into actually playing football this season so far. So we are trying just the lack of success. Next week, we're just going to have to be better. This one's on us, and we're just going to have to be better next week. I mean, I think we're all going to be at home (laughs) next week. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But let's just jump in, guys. I mean, that's way too long of an open. (laughs) But, again, we don't want to have to do this, but it – you win against the Bengals, and that's the ultimate elixir for the Browns. That's the only real well, team that you can beat. I mean, everyone kept asking, are the, did they turn it around, or is it just because we have this thing where we could beat the Bengals? Well, clearly, it's just this thing that we could beat the Bengals. Because that, that run defense, dude, I mean, like, 
What run defense? Uh, <laughs> wet paper I towel would have stopped the running backs better <laughs> than mean, those guys would. I'm telling you right now, like that was a joke. Like I can't believe Jeff Wilson Jr. They they made that dude look like a pro baller today, and he was just a dude that he was just a jag, just a guy. Yeah, I didn't Miami come in? Didn't weren't people talking this week? It was a complete they, opposite. They, they they can't run the football. They can't run the football, or they can't stop. They're the like football. Did, wait, did, like did the they tell Miami opposite. that? Because Miami obviously didn't get that memo. Did they? Tell, no, they must they, have. They must have told because well, they, 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 like, they ran. Oh. They ran all over the place. Yeah, did they, they tell the Browns that? Because they left every single hole open, thinking, "Oh yeah, they don't run anyway, so they're just gonna fall on their fall on their knees or fall on their ass every single time." After a yard. No, you actually still have to tackle somebody up the middle. We have no defensive tackles. That, no. Like, it's the defensive tackles. Maybe we can for... get some in the draft. Oh, oh we oh. got one in the draft. Where's he at? Oh. At home because he couldn't uh, pay attention to the rules. And another one. And then, I, this drives me nuts. So you're suspended from the team. You just and as soon as the game's <laughs> over, you get on Twitter and start tweeting? Dude, just shut up and go to work. Wait, what? Oh, Perrion Winfrey. Oh, sure God, enough, no. said, I don't know. I don't even know what he said, but I'm like, no. <laughs> how are you on Twitter when you can't? You're not even allowed to go to the game. Like you're healthy and active because supposedly he's been out at the clubs too much or whatever. I don't know what had happened with this dude, but if you were brought here, like you had a chance to be a starting tackle here. You were what fourth round pick, and everyone's like, oh, this guy's <laughs> gonna be a, a steal of the draft. Dude has been a bum all year, yeah. and then you're going to get on Twitter like, dude, shut up. Like, I don't want anyone tweeting when you're losing. Like, I'm sorry, that drives me nuts. Is it? Does it cause the game to lose? No, but it's the principle, dude. You can't be getting on social media, talking whatever you're going to talk, when you can't even make it to the game because you're so irresponsible. I think I just came up with a better better title for the show, and it's too late for it. <laughs> but, I mean, it our – our title still works. I mean, it's another Browns debacle. That's exactly what it is. But it, they're all bark, no bite. Oh, yeah. All bark, there no bite. Like, For sure. We are supposed to be some dogs out here. We have a dog pound. D-A-W-Gs out there. I see none of that on the field. Again, I go back to, and everybody made a big deal out of this. I had this eerie feeling about it. I didn't want to say anything because I never like to jinx the teams that I root for. I will always root for Cleveland. Like, on the front of the chest, if you are wearing Cleveland, I will still root for you. As difficult as that decision was for me to continue with after what happened this offseason, we are well beyond that. I am still going to root for Cleveland. I want good American football here in Cleveland, and we aren't getting it. And everybody made this big deal about well, Miles, who's a leader, you know, he really stepped up in that Cincinnati game, and there's a lot of music going on in the background of these press conferences, these locker room stuff before practice. You know, you know, Miles, what's what's going on with that? Well, there's just a paraphrasing here from Miles. There's just a different vibe in the locker room. Guys are, you know, flying around. They're they're having a good time. Well, you you did a lot more of having a good time instead of flying around on a football field and actually showing that you gave a darn. Is it bad? I don't even care. Like that they lose. Like I'm too. Like I, 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 I'll get excited again when they win. But when they lose now, it's like I just like yeah, whatever. I don't even it's, care. Like it's not about caring that they lost. Like I'm not ranting because I care. Like having this like they ruined oh, my to, day. Like, yeah, like they used to legitly. I'd be pissed off. Ruins my day. Monday, I'm all, I'm still like kind of annoyed. Now I'm just like yeah, whatever. They're the. I hate to. God, saying this but the browns are the browns like that's what i feel like ah it's the browns like i don't even care anymore they're gonna lose they're always losing i'm just so beaten down just used to it now i guess yeah and the frustrating part is you came out flat like the browns are the best and i'll give coach stefanski this the first drive. He, he can scheme that first script of plays whatever it is i think it's like they always say 15 to 25 plays mm -hmm. He can script those like nobody's business, and this team can go down and score an opening touchdown. Where is the rest? I mean, you declawed the Bengals, but then you go you go down to Florida, and you go into the little fishbowl with animals with fins, and they just swim all over you. I, I just I don't know how this happens after two weeks off. Like That's what I'm frustrated about. I, I'm not going to let losses ruin my day. What I'm frustrated about is this culture is still here. 
So everybody that always talks about the Browns winning the offseason, finding a way to win the offseason, and I'm sure they'll find a way to make headlines this coming offseason too, and everybody will be all excited. The culture is still the same. Until you see that change during the actual season, stop getting excited during the offseason. Stop listening and letting these guys tell you these things. Get, Here's the difference. Getting all in your head. The words don't Who are you mean do anything. This off Who are you going to draft? Who are you going to trade for? Last year you I, I traded know. for the weirdest situation I've ever seen. But you just said but, the Browns is the Browns, and like that's that's just what happens. Like they find a way to be the story of the off season or yeah. one of the stories of the off season. They don't have no first round picks this year. It's like when they suck too. That's another thing. It's like ah, at least we're our first round pick will be a little higher. We always found that weird silver lining in it. We love our first round picks, but we don't even have them. I'm gonna, and it's nothing against the people on Twitter because there's there are a lot of pe- good people, and in the Cleveland sports community that you and I get to talk to, and uh, we have met through that. Like you and I met through Twitter, Cleveland Twitter, like Cleveland sports Twitter. I guess technically Browns Twitter at that like time. Like we said, it's the best of the world, and it's the worst of the world at it the is. exact same time. So it's nothing against these people, but I'm probably gonna mute everybody during the off season that puts out some sort of mock draft for rounds <laughs> three through seven. If, if I see a seven-round mock just so that you can get the Browns starting with their second-round pick or wherever they are, oh. I, I'm just I'm muting that because I have no care about the draft. I have no care about football. Guys, I'm in soccer mode because in one week, the World Cup starts in Qatar. I'm sorry. I'm in I'm in soccer mode and I'm in basketball mode too. It's just they're not. We gotta talk well about that stadium. I just saw a picture of that what it was made of. That was pretty weird. Yeah, and they're gonna like take it down too. It's I movable. know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's movable. It's all made out of uh like shipyard crates and stuff yeah, like that. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, one of the stadiums in Qatar, Peter, I don't know if you saw this either. I haven't seen um, it. Um yeah, so it's basically uh when you see like a semi truck or those those yeah, sh- the shipping the, container. Yeah, the shipping containers. There is a stadium made out of those in Qatar, and it's movable to the point where they can, like, you know, you move it to if Uruguay, I think it is, somewhere in South America that's vying for the 2030 World Cup. Because if you haven't heard, the U.S., Mexico, and Canada, a joint North American World Cup coming in 2026, all three of those countries automatically qualify since they're hosting. So. The U.S. doesn't have to actually go through qualification. Yeah, they should because they don't develop their players well enough. That's a topic for the end of the show. But they can move it. And if Uruguay or one of those South American countries gets the World Cup in 2030, that stadium is going to be seen again in a different part of the world. Oh, weird. Which is crazy to me. Yeah, it's pretty cool, though. But I'd rather talk about that than, <laughs> you know, a, a team that goes down, you know, they're definitely not movable. You can't move what you got on Monday night down to any other game. I, I don't – I just – I don't know. I, they're not ruining my Sunday. Like, I'm apathetic to it. Mm-hmm. I'm numb to it. Exactly. I said it. Like, I don't know. It, but, that bad but, for them? Like, But I'm in a business where – and I'm we're both – we're all oh, – I told – like I said, I went on Twitter. I was like, if we didn't have to do this show, I would have just turned that game off. Like, I had to force myself to watch it. I didn't want to watch it. I didn't want to watch it. If I don't want to watch, like I told you, dude, I love watching football. Any aspect, I could watch arena football, any type of football, I could sit there and just watch it. I did not want to watch today. I was just annoyed. I'm like, oh, these dudes are garbage. Kevin, it was before halftime. I knew that game was over. As soon as they scored at halftime, right before the half, I'm like, oh, they're done. This is over. Great. I got to watch another half of football when I know they're going to lose. They just got beat up. Like, they literally lost the trenches. We're supposed to be this big, tough, physical team. Their defensive line dominated our offensive line. Yep. Their offensive line dominated our defensive line. Like, it was just bad. I mean, it was domination all the way around. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm glad Cade York made, you know, made his kicks. Um, uh, Jerome Ford showed up on a, on a kickoff return to start the game. That's what got everything started. Didn't see much out of the special teams the rest of the day. They, I mean, Cade York. I mean, he made his kick. Yeah, he got a good kick return. So they they, they were all right, but I don't even think I see, did. The Dolphins punter even punt today? I don't think so. Like it didn't seem like there was a defense in front of them. It just seemed yeah. like one of those where you go uh, when you used to go to basketball practice, or I think even sometimes in football practice, you just have the offense against themselves. It's just like you know walk through or whatever. It just like looked like they were walking through 
plays and they just they just went to a certain level, a certain point. Okay, we got 13, 14 yards. We want to run more plays, so let's just let's just keep the drive going instead of like we could actually run to the end zone every single time. There was no resistance at all. There was no pass rush. And the guy that is supposed to be a defensive player of the year candidate again did not show up. I understand and everybody has said all of the time that you know he's getting chipped. He's got two or three guys on him. That was supposed to be different here's with Jadavion Clowney. Here's that it didn't the, change. Today. Every if you watch all their passes, m- most of them real short, mm-hmm. real quick. Yeah, they didn't. They're like, all right, we got to get rid of Miles Garrett. So if they're gonna do that, and I have not seen this adjustment all year, and it's driving me nuts. Why aren't they pressing the wide receivers? If you're gonna, if everyone's gonna throw short on you or oh. run the ball, bring your corners up. And press ride receivers, put uh, pressure on them, and they don't. No, we're just going to keep playing the Greg Williams style of zone defense, where like zone is if the receivers can find a spot to sit in the zone, get in the eye line of the quarterback, that's how you break down a zone defense in football. Well, you're giving way too many yards up, especially when it's third and 16, third and long, and you're allowing them not just to get to the sticks – you're allowing them to get past the sticks and then turn around and open up for their quarterback. There's, there's no good out there. And and it's, I don't know, uh, people making excuses, you know, blaming Nick Chubb. Yeah. He can't fumble the football, but he can't be perfect all year. Can't, can't be perfect all year. I think it's for his first fumble all year. First fumble all year. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Maybe the defense needs to stop. Like, okay. The offense gets a score. Maybe don't allow the other team to score right after. Your offense is in a rhythm. That's what I want to see. That's the adjustment or the uh, level of focus I haven't seen from this team. It's your offense gets in a rhythm. They may struggle to start. They get in that rhythm. Now they score a touchdown. Your defense comes out. What do you want to do? Get a three and out. Get the offense back on the field. And allow the offense to go back to work because they're already in a rhythm and you're going against a tired defense. Oh, dude, I mean, how many times, too, today did they, it'd be like they'd throw an incomplete pass on first down, second down, and then we'd get like a holding or offsides or a pass interference or a roughing the passer. I'm like, dude, you guys just keep shooting yourselves in the foot nonstop. Yeah. All if, right, guys. If they actually played defense, then the yellow laundry came out in the fle- field. If they didn't commit penalties, they didn't also commit any tackles. You guys think we got a chance for the playoffs at all anymore? Oh, at all? no. This season, the, Zero. This, this ended it I mean, it's, we're not mathematically eliminated, right. but, yeah, I'm about 100% no, yeah, sure that we're there, not. The chances of us beating the Bills next oh. week, I mean, if, if the we're defense would have – that game. Then. Yeah, if the defense would have shown up today like they – if they would have played like they played against Cincinnati, it would be a completely different conversation. But Better chance. Yeah. Browns beating the Bills – United States winning the World Cup. Right now, it's the United States winning the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that chance is... I just wanted... Any time I can throw soccer towards my guy, I think I'll do it to that, him. That chance is far off, too. Yeah, like, no, that, no. That chance is is so far off. So, like, well, that's I didn't that's say men's. It could be the women's league. Yeah, they've also lost three straight. Oh, have they? In, not in doing too good? Play. Yeah, they haven't been playing too good either. So, uh, we're not going to... We're not going to dive too deep into, into that. And uh, those of you that think that... and. All the power to you. I'm not a fan of this person, but all the people that are touting that they got the jersey of the quarterback that's supposed to be the actual savior and they paid $200, $230 million to, I hope you enjoy seeing him work through the rust and just having some fun because guess what? This team is not going to be in a position for him to be the savior. And again, having the fan goggles on, thinking that this guy that hasn't played in two years is just going to come out playing guns a blazing and winning every game at the end of the year that's not me, gonna happen either all i want to see now i guess i said i can give up on playoff hopes and division and all that i just got to see that offense at least i got to see how he does with that team offense yeah because i got i just hope he's he is what he was that's the only thing as if not save. this team's done for years and years and years if he's not that good anymore that's the only thing saving kevin stefanski's job oh, i told you is he how is, those six games he's go. he's either the fire extinguisher or the gasoline to his seat if, the, if those six games don't go well either i don't know if kevin stefanski makes it through with how quickly the haslam's move on from things i don't know if they make it through either but there was a lot of other football played around the nfl we'll leave the browns there a good 20 minutes of 
venting, but also <laughs> like apathetic venting. <laughs> like, like, we're not mad. Yeah. Like, like I, yeah, you guys suck, but whatever. <laughs> At least it's you and not me playing. I think what maybe the only thing that gets me mad is that there's so many other fandoms, fan bases that get to have fun on Sundays with football and like their teams get that opening win and they get the confidence. So we'll talk about some of those games around the league. We will whip around the NFL as sometimes they say on the other side, this is the voice of land on the big play network. Whether you're looking to hire new talent or start a new career, vector technical has you covered. Vector Technical is a 28-year-old staffing firm that has helped thousands of job seekers advance in their career with reputable partners throughout Northeastern Ohio. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. With an above average hire in rate of one in four candidates, Vector works hard to connect the right person with the right opportunity the first time. Vector Technical hires for skilled manufacturing and light industrial work and is sure to have a career that you've been looking for. To learn more, visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com. Welcome back to The Voice Land, your Browns post-game show right here on the Big Play Network. Kevin Arnold, always positive, Jay, and audio, the producer extraordinaire. Came back in the first segment, at least, we did our, we did our job. We talked nope. about the Browns. Now, let's, let's see which fan bases are actually having fun on Sundays in the NFL as we whip around the league. We got some games going on right now. The good one going, and it is, they call it America's Game of the Week on Fox, and it really is. Cowboys, Packers, 28-28. Cowboys, I think, are 6-2 and two on the year. Packers, 3-6. and six. Rodgers, weird dude, but not getting much production out of that wide receiver room. There's not many no. targets there, but a good one going. 229 left in the fourth quarter. Um, looking for... Mine's going way too slow. What other scores we got going on right now, at least? What's in progress? We got uh, Cardinals versus the Rams. Cardinals up 27-10. Rams are just, man, they won their Super Bowl and just went to sleep. Hey, Super Bowl hangover. Plus, hey, uh, Matthew Stafford, I believe, and Kyler Murray not active for that game today. So you had the uh, battle of the backups and Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy. (laughs) Wasn't Finding a way, man. Oh, we gave up on him too soon. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> James, who was it? Uh, James Harrison about killed that dude. Yeah. So good game. It, those uh, Vikings Bills today. Vikings go to eight and one. I no oh. one saw that coming. Like I, I thought yeah. they were going to be good. And Justin, I don't know if you've seen this pit catch, but Justin Jefferson has the catch of the year right now. He, oh my! He already I... beat out George Pickens. One because the timing of the play, but. In covers like that, dude, all over him, just reaches up one hand. Other guy's got his ball, and he just somehow contorts it. And I'm, I was hmm. Did best you, receiver in the NFL right now. So there, this weekend was some. There were some epic, epic catches this weekend, and like in mm-hmm. football in general. Did you see the catch in the Notre Dame game? No. Was it the behind the back one where, off the yeah. defender's back? So yeah. like you've seen it before, where a guy catches it and like pins it to the guy's back. Mm-hmm. This guy not only caught it with reaching around the defender's back. But then, as like in order to secure it, he just rips it one hand and just comes out with it with one hand. Didn't have to pin it to his back. Nice. He had it secured in his hands, and takes it with one, him. and just shows the referee while he's being like bear hugged by the defender. Marvin Harrison Jr. had a nice catch oh in that game too. Oh my god, the body control to get he's, that foot in bounds. He's best receiver in college right oh, now. Oh he yeah, is so definitely. NFL ready. You know his dad got him who's working with him his whole life. Like, that dude is so finely tuned. Do you fear it? I don't even know how he did that. Because he was fall, going out of beast. bounds with his left foot further down. And so I don't. it doesn't even make sense how he did it, but it was amazing. To know where you're at in the field, know which foot you can get in bounds, because you only got to get one in high school mm-hmm. and college, and to get that foot in bounds, that was spectacular. But going back to the Bills-Vikings game, we, I switched over to red zone. About three, four minutes left in the Browns game. I'm like, I have to watch this. I have to watch it to the end. Just in case there's something there I need to to clip or something, whatever, whatever it might be. And but I switch over red zone and I see that, you know, Bills are up 27-17. And I don't know if it was Dalvin Cook or one of their backup running backs of the Vikings goes in goes into the end zone. It's 27-24. Um, Vikings get the ball with a chance to to go take the lead, 4th and 18. Justin Jefferson 
the defender looked like he was well in position to intercept oh, yeah. it. He just reaches back. It was like the Odell catch. He reaches back with one hand, just reaches up, somehow comes down. It, the ball doesn't touch the ground. He fingertip strength, keeping it off the ground, wrestles it away, first down, and the Vikings go on a drive, end up uh, end up punching it in. Or no, they didn't punch it in. They got stopped at fourth and goal. The <laughs> The Bills had a chance to finish it out, but the Vikings had one timeout, so they had to run it, and it was at the one-inch line. So Josh Allen goes under center to just try to push his big body out there, give him a little breathing room, and then force the Vikings to take that final timeout, then take the knee, you finish the game, you go to 7-2, and two, you drop the Vikings to 7-2. and two. No, fumble on the snap, Vikings recover <laughs> in the end zone. <laughs> they, they take the lead. Buffalo comes right down, ties the game with a field goal. That's crazy. It goes to overtime. The Vikings end up winning because uh, a, I think it was Patrick Peterson. I think he's playing for the Vikings now. Mm -hmm. He intercepts Josh Allen. Don't know where he was throwing the football. They're down three. They their defense did what they were supposed to do. They they gave up a lot of yards. They bend. They bended, but they didn't break. Gave up only a field goal. Got their offense out there. The offense starts to churn up yards. Josh Allen just throws it to no man's land and Patrick Peterson. I guess it was his fourth red zone interception uh, in the last two games nice. from Josh Allen. But do you think the Browns have a chance against that team coming off a no. loss like that, even with Josh Allen hurting? No. No, that was 33-30 in an epic game with two offenses that are just Another absolutely really spectacular. Another really good game was uh, no one saw this coming out of Detroit and Chicago. Oh, yeah, that was going. Detroit winning 31-30. But, man, Justin Fields is coming to his own. 147 yards rushing, two touchdowns. It was one of them, like, 67 yards or something like that. Yeah, but he also threw a pick six to his former teammate in uh, Akuda. Yeah, maybe he just, was, like, saw the Ohio State thing. Huh? Yeah, he almost threw it. Another, almost <laughs> I know that well, guy. Yeah, that dude has, like, no receivers. I mean, they what traded was... for Clay's, uh, Chase Claypool, and that dude's garbage. So I mean, but you can't – yeah, J Justin Fields throws some – inexcusable interception still as a as a young quarterback but you can't really fault him for what happens to uh what, what happens to the bears because the, the one their line's garbage like the reason he has 147 yards rushing is because he has to run all yeah. over the place as soon as he gets into his three-step drop five-step drop defenders in your face and if i understand aiden hutchinson is a really good player but if the detroit lions who only had two wins coming into today, I think. If they're getting all four of their guys through your offensive line, you got a team like that that's pushing you around, you know you got problems on your offensive line, and you are putting your young quarterback, who has shown, again, that he is the future there. Now, only two he reminds, of them. He's doing stuff that reminds me of Michael Vick. Yes. The only difference is I know he's going to study where Michael Vick did not study at all. Correct. Correct. You just you gotta put some talent around that kid, man. As long as he as long as he like makes it out, okay. Yeah, you need a line and a wide receiver. He was twelve of twenty for 167 yards, eight point four yard average, two touchdowns, one interception. I think that was yeah, so he was sacked three times. I, I don't know what the I don't know if they have like the team stats about pressures and stuff. Um for for Detroit. I know that there those stats are somewhere, but okay, we got team stats right here. I'm interested in that. Was there another game, Jay? While I looked this up, that you were, that you that kind of caught your eye. Hey, Jeff Saturday, got the Colts a win. No, I mean, actually, not really. I haven't been watching too much football after the Browns debacle. I just ended up turning into the the Punisher myself. And yeah, the Cavs I mean, right now are yeah, getting get, beat down. I yeah, don't beat see down off the West Coast trip. They don't have Donovan Mitchell. They don't have uh, they don't have Jared Allen. We'll talk about the Cavs in the. We'll talk about the Cavs next. But I do want to just finish our whip around the league because I think the I, we can all agree the game of the day was Vikings Bills and then mm -hmm. Detroit kind of that that sleeper game. Everything else kind of went to went to what it was supposed to be. The one thing I wanted to get your guys' quick thoughts on. Jeff Saturday being named the interim head coach without having much head coaching experience outside of high school and just a former offensive lineman, Hall of Fame offensive lineman for the Colts. But just that's as much to his credit as he can as he can get. And he's allowed to be brought in with all these other guys. 
on the sidelines, especially with the Rooney rule in place, guys, minorities and stuff like that, that have been scratching, clawing, looking for those opportunities to lead a group of men. He's just brought in just like that. I mean, Joe Thomas, I don't know if you heard what he said. Oh, but he ripped him. He, he was dead on. He Completely was. right. Like, you just slapped – it was a slap in the face to all those people that deserved the job before he did. Hmm. And he said it best. You've hired your drinking buddy to control a multi-billion dollar franchise. Like, dude has no experience whatsoever except for high school football. Like, that was a joke move. And it, it, Hope it works out for you, man. Because if it don't, you're gonna look really stupid. <laughs> it worked out for one day, Peter. Did you? Uh, did, did you have like any reaction to it, or just like, oh well, you know, Jim Mercy's well, one of those owners, and well, this is my, just par for the course. My my thought is, you know, the, he owns the team. He can do what he wants. That's the problem. I think it is a slap in the face. I think, I think it's a slap in the face of the fans. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're not guaranteed anything, and that's the thing. Like, I have an issue with the Rooney Rule because. I feel like most teams pay lip service to it. Yeah. And here's the thing is, like, I own a business. I own a couple businesses. I don't I don't care what color you are. I don't care if you're green, purple. I don't care. If you're the best person, for, I want the best person for the job. Yeah. You know, and if it's, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, and, and I think yeah. that that's the problem I have with that rule is just that I think it's, it just doesn't make sense because they bring yeah. someone in and and they have no intentions of giving this guy a fair shot at the job. But with this, with Jeff, the Saturday, you know, I think it's stupid. But you know, in, a, he owns I mean, a in team. a perfect world, yeah. there would be no need for the Rooney Rule. Like there shouldn't be a need for the Rooney right. Rule. Yeah, the fact they that should there be is, getting these opportunities problem. no matter what. Like well, that tells you all your problems right there. Is that right. There, there is the need for that. That you have to be forced, like. Shouldn't have to be forced to have interview the right people for the right job. Well, exactly. They should call Vector Technical. Yeah, seriously. Get the right, right, uh, the right person in the right job the first time. There you go. Hey. Maybe, maybe, more, maybe, more, uh, maybe the, more, more maybe the Haslam should call uh, Vector. Yeah, more, seriously. More info to come on them here in just one second. But I just want to close that by, you know, yeah, they're they're probably feeling good about that move right now because they won. You beat a lowly Raiders team who has underperformed completely. Oh, I mean, they're kind really of bad. the. I would say the most disappointing team, like where the Browns were last year with the expectations going in. And, and yeah, there were some expectations on the Browns, but you didn't know what was going to happen without having like that main starting quarterback behind center. So like it felt like the Browns were going to get a pass no matter what. I don't think that they should. And we'll have those conversations at the end of the season, why they won't get a pass from me, depending on how things end. But yes, Jeff, Jeff Saturday is, is, a well-respected person within NFL circles. And when he was on ESPN talking the game of football, you know you could hear his knowledge, his passion for the game, his passion for things to go right for teams. He rooted for just teams in, in the league in general. He always looked at things like we do realistically. But that's just to happen in the middle of the season and, that, and like, there is no conversations, there's no talk of, like, oh, we've started the process of interviewing people and, and things like that. He's just brought in off the street, off the off the broadcast desk, instead of like he was already in the organization. That just that doesn't sit right. And I think the one thing that the business of sports people can relate to working in any industry is that happens too often where you don't know if the person is actually qualified. They're just given, you know. I hate the to- I hate the cliche of it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yes, there is an element of that, element of that in the adult world and the business world, but you gotta at least, you gotta earn it to to a certain extent. You gotta be willing to put in the work. I'll tell you who does extent. like this move: Jonathan Taylor, fantasy owners. Yeah, well. <laughs> that's about the only way it's going. Because you know, an offensive lineman is like, we're running the ball. We got this Pro Bowler running back. We're running the ball nonstop. Dude sucked all year and got 147 yards out of nowhere. Well, like, I can't take solace in that either because I don't got Jonathan. Taylor, I don't got him either. And I don't got any success in fantasy football this year. But that's okay because I already can tell you that I'm not a good fantasy football player. Oh, poor Riz. So we're playing yeah. Joby this week. Ooh. Yeah, it looks like we're going to – not only did he have to watch the Dolphins game with the Dolphins fan, but I'm pretty sure we're going to lose to him in fantasy <laughs> football too. I'm like, <laughs> you got the double whammy sitting next to him. Yeah, that's good thing Joe's probably one of the nicest people ever. Probably didn't give him no slack for it. We love you, Riz. Uh, you know, I hope that uh, we'll we'll try to liven up the office for when you come home. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's all we can do. With that being said, we are going to hit our, our 
next break. If you want some voice and land gear, I'm sporting. If you can't see us, you're just listening to us, I am sporting a voice and land cap. We have some information in this break about where you can get your voice and land gear. We'll talk calves next, right here on the Voice and Land on the Big Play Network. Are you struggling to hire the right talent or maybe even find the right career? Vector Technical makes it easy. Since 1992, Vector has provided Ohio employers with a reliable process for hiring and have helped thousands of job seekers advance in their careers. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. We invest time to get to know each client and candidate personally. Vector places people and job opportunities that they are truly excited about. Interested in learning more? Visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com to see a full list of our current job opportunities and to find out what Vector Technical can offer you. Get your gear at voiceoftheland.com forward slash shop. Welcome back to The Voice of the Land right here on the Big Play Network. Time to talk a little basketball, a little Cavs. And Cavs not doing so well tonight. If you're tuning in to us and maybe got the Cavs on our device or your Bally Sports app isn't working, which it usually doesn't for most people. Oh, and, my God. And you're tuning in to us. We really appreciate you choosing us as the next option to the Cavs. Um, they're losing 84-65 right now. Coming off the West Coast, losing three straight games possibly going to four. We'll see. It's middle of the third quarter right now. They're in the TV timeout in the third quarter, 653 left. Lost three straight games on the road. And, you know, they didn't play well in the first half against the Lakers. They ended up coming back. And then you're in control of that Clippers game. And I think that's where things went south is when you gave up that lead at the end of the Clippers game, that's where things went south on this trip. Because, again, they've been leading in fourth quarters for the most part. Mm-hmm. It's those little mistakes, those little turnovers that have hurt them. The Golden State Warriors have been in close games many times before. This is not the same Cavs team that faced the Warriors four times, as much as we always like to bring up those rivalry elements every time these two teams play. That is a championship-laden, a championship-tested team. So in the regular season, when you're tested, they're going to they're going to come through. This young team is going to have to grow up and grow up quick because no one's going to feel sorry for you. Yes, there's going to be adjustment periods. And we here on The Voice Land, I know many other Cleveland fans, are in for the journey. And we knew the journey wasn't going to be 8-1, and one, winning a bunch of games in a row. So we're not going to get time. on Twitter after games and call for Garland to get traded like some of these clowns on Twitter are doing? I mean... <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I saw something, they po- the Cavs posted something, I'm like, I just started reading the comments. I'm, I'm like, dude, are you serious? Like, you're going to get rid of Garland already? I think I scroll on Twitter, but I don't actually pay attention, because, like, I don't see these Someone things. pointed it out, I think it was Raconia pointed it out, and he was like, you guys aren't even real fans to begin with anyways, which he's right. But I was just like, I just want to see, like, I have to see what he's talking about, and I'm like... I mean, you expect you expect in a game like tonight where you don't have your leading scorer in Donovan Mitchell and you don't have your leading rim protector in Jared Allen, you expect Darius Garland to be that guy to step up. He has. He's got 21 points into the third quarter. Mm-hmm. No one else is coming along with him. Evan Mobley, second-year guy, having a bit of a sophomore slump to start yes. his, his second year. Which is okay, it, but he's okay. got to get out of it. Like, you got to learn. you got to get a little stronger. Work on your game. And those those struggles get magnified in a game like this because you are down two of your starters and you're on a three-game losing streak. You're coming home. Your legs might be dead, but you got to find a way to get off the schneid. you got to find a way to get a win because now three games going to four, you're in a snowball effect. You had the good snowball effect with the wins after that Toronto game. You win a straight You don't want to be a team that wins a lot in a row and then loses a lot in a row. You want to be a team that puts a lot of good games together and maybe a a dud here or there, a couple duds in a row. They're putting too many. Yes, it's really early, so we're not going to freak out. It's important, I think, for people to realize, yes, it is good to point out issues when there are issues and be realistic. Being realistic, Darius Garland turned the ball over in late in a couple of those games and led to helping cost the Cavs those wins when they were already leading. He cannot do that. 
taking that next step. He was an all-star last year. He needs to go up into the upper echelon of the NBA to take that next step. He was getting the respect from his peers that are in that upper echelon. He needs to come through in those moments. When he doesn't, it's good to call him out. But then to take it from, boy, this team is going to win a championship to the next extreme where Garland's got to be traded. (laughs) That's why fans are called fans. It's short for fanatics. There's just too much fanatic going on these days, and too many people have a voice that is beyond ridiculous. Someone said it. Just because you got an opinion doesn't mean you got to share it. All right. The, all the time. Right. We we fully acknowledge that opinion opinions matter and opinions aren't fact. Like we'll have opinions and if we're wrong, we'll tell you we were wrong if they come out to be proven as a fact to be wrong. We will do that here. But if you give us an opinion and you say, you know, the Cavs need a wing defender or they need Evan Mobley to step up. Darius Garland can't turn the ball over late in a game. We may not agree. I, Yes, we agree because I just said that. But <laughs> we may not agree with some of those, but those are viable opinions. That's your thought. You have every right. We'll have a conversation. We'll go back and forth. But then just to spew stupidity, th- that's where the line gets crossed of like, okay, yes, opinions matter. Remember when teachers used to tell you there is no stupid question? Mm-hmm. The some people may say that there's no stupid uh, sports tape because it's it's someone's opinion. They can think how they want. No, they're stupid sports. Just tape. like <laughs> I'm sorry, there's... I'm gonna pull back the curtain on teaching. Teachers would would tell you if they if you really ask them to be honest. Kids ask stupid questions. There are actually stupid questions. But as teachers, as educators, as developers of young people, you say those things and you follow through on saying that there's no stupid questions because you want to help them develop. You want to help them succeed. That's totally fine. The Some of those people that didn't learn their lessons from some of these great teachers we have in Northeast Ohio that now are on Twitter spewing stupid sports takes, you're probably the ones that said the stupid questions in school and didn't actually learn from it. That's on you. At some point, the responsibility has to be on the person not. But they can, have, they can be verified now at least. Can they? I thought that went away. <laughs> I don't know. I think they shut down Twitter Blue with oh the ver- verification. Did they? Boy, that was so stupid. God, oh was my fun. God. Oh geez, that was. And then people like getting up on their high horse, saying like, "Boy, I got the verification. You don't. I paid the eight dollars. What What are you doing? I don't know. Maybe saving money for bills, trying I, to build a family because my wife is pregnant." Something. And I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to get a house. I'm trying to develop, like build my family. Maybe I want to save money. Eight bucks a month doesn't seem like a lot, but it turns into a lot. Look at all these streaming services. You pay eight bucks a month for this one. You pay seven for that one. It all adds up in the end, and you're paying stuff that I doesn't help matter. It. I had to take it down. Sorry, too, guys. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I, I was the one morning I was just reading, and it was like four different people in a row, and it was like, oh, I have now I'm verified, you know. No thanks to anybody else. I paid for it myself, and I and then they explained to me why. Like, dude, I just wrote on there. I'm like, good for you for getting a, your blue check mark. No one care. Like, you don't have to tell us why, because no one cares. But here's the thing, though: is now the blue check marks don't really mean anything, which yeah. is kind of great because I guess one of the things I saw that came out is apparently some of uh, some of the blue check marks mm-hmm. were being sold by Twitter employees. So yeah, the, so the verification process. Because we couldn't get verified as Voice of the Land because we don't have official press credentials. I mean, I have press credentials now from the OHSAA. Hey. So, hey. you know, so may, I don't know if that is good or, enough. But I don't think I don't we'll pay never bucks. pay. I want to pay a dollar a month for a check mark. Like, I just don't right. care. Because, one, if, if, you want, if someone wants to make an always positive J, good. I don't care. No one, You're going to know the difference yeah. between me and whoever. Like, I just don't care. Yeah, I, I it's not a status thing for me. I can give two craps. Yeah, like I don't care. I don't but it's it it just I can the people that were making it a status thing was yes. just like Yeah, that's silly. Oh, Did, oh boy, uh, I'm on Brown's Fontana Twitter. Fontana didn't do it for you by posting it. He I was know. doing it. He was he would just take a picture and then screenshot it and then like doodle on there like a blue check mark <laughs> he goes i got you for free i'm like oh I'll help my buddy kevin out you don't want to pay for one either at this point i mean like 
And again, I think that they put at least a pause on it. I thought I saw that. There's back and forth information Here, on it. Here's the deal. Anyone that wants me to believe you have a blue check mark, send me $8 a month. Mm-hmm. Actually, send me $4 a month. 50% off. Send me $4 a month. I'll pretend you have a blue check mark. Perfect. Someone did something in it. I mean, if out of pure comedy, they paid the $8 just for this comment. Mm. And I laughed so hard. <laughs> I shouldn't say this. We get the blue go check. Ahead, go He's ahead. Even if it crosses check. the line on the show, I don't really care. It doesn't, right now. it doesn't really cross the line, but he gets a blue check mark. He's, I got a blue check mark. Take that, pores. And I was just oh. like, oh my God, that's so wrong. But it was so funny. I couldn't help but laugh. It's like, I mean, that's what it was. That's what it really is to people. They're like, if you got money, you can have the blue check mark. And he just, like, the person that did it is a total, like, he's kind of like, um, McNeil, he's a very satire account. Yeah. And I was just I like like you are right now. I was in tears laughing. I'm like, that's wrong. I'm but going to hell. Damn it if it's not funny. But I'm going to hell. <laughs> it's, but it's one of those things where like I like I kinda understand the idea behind it because mm-hmm. if you have a bunch of fake accounts, it doesn't cost you anything to make fake accounts. If it costs you something, none of these bot accounts are going to pay eight dollars for every. But they account were. They have. Well, the funny that's it. Well, the, well, the people that are being smart asses are all paying the eight dollars to be smart asses. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there will be people to to make fake accounts. Oh, they stop. will. I mean, there was the person that made the fake LeBron account, and it was King James, but it was I think King James was in all all caps, and the S was a Z, and someone like people got actually duped by people like that there were a couple other sports yeah. information things out there this person said that i'm requesting a trade from the lakers and oh my all God. of this other stuff and like you could clearly see the name wasn't the same like the at sign wasn't the same uh, i guess the trick was you got to click on the blue check mark neither says this person is verified as a you know an yeah. actual person business news whatever it might be um, this person is, a, you know, just a verified account through Twitter Blue or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. Like, you could tell the difference. Oh, so there's there's tears to the check marks now. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> so, Elon. Do the, now the people that have the blue check marks to keep them have they had to had to pay for this? I have. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, and then Elon Musk was touting that he paid the eight bucks himself to also keep the verification. I I know the people that had. Blue check marks. Like you still had to, you had to pay eight bucks mm. within the next three months. You had to start doing that, or else your blue check mark was going to go away. So, like he's saying, oh like, man, some egos are going to get hurt. I, if it if it continues, like I said, I think it's like I think it got taken off the board. But like people that have the blue check mark now, it just stays there. Yeah, I don't know. But Musk was touting that he paid the eight bucks a month. Well, of course you can afford the eight bucks a month. You're rich. You paid forty four billion dollars for Twitter, let alone Boy. the fact that you're taking everybody else's eight bucks a month. You're just turning it around. You're taking one person's and turning it around to your own. I think you have enough money for eight bucks a month. Well, I don't need you to tell me that you can do that. Did Did you hear the? Yeah, but well, here's the thing: is that he said Twitter was losing four million dollars a day. Before that, he took over, that's why they the that's why he did some of those layoffs because it was they looked at the numbers. That's why he tried to back out of the deal because he found out after, you know, the due diligence or whatever, supposedly that way more like Twitter was always like, oh, only five percent of our users are bots, and it turned if report like again, like I don't know, this is what I've heard is that it was closer to like twenty five percent of all the users. What on a Twitter stupid were bots. waste of money, though. Like, yeah. seriously, of all the things you could do in the world, like, that dude could literally, with all that money, almost end world hunger. Like, you could build, like, a whole new infrastructure in public schools in this country. You know mm. what? I want to buy Twitter. Actually, you're off by a couple zeros. Hmm? Four, $44 <laughs> billion is a lot of money, nice. but it won't, do, it won't do all you're talking about. Oh, I'm just saying, like, you could, <laughs> yeah. you, you could do You could do things. a lot. Right, because, you know, like, I I think the general idea of what you're, what you're saying is that you had $44 billion to give to this, and I'm sure you're, st- like, that didn't even make a big dent in your checkbook or yeah, whatever. you could have done good with that. Like, you saying. have a lot more money that you could have used that plus whatever yeah. else you have to, to do that. Yeah, uh, no, he's just more concerned about making sure that, like, everyone gets fact-checked and all, like, all these political people can't be spewing stuff on there and all that. Like, it got way too political for 
what he's doing and his clapbacks of people are terrible clapbacks. And Elon, you're doing too much, man. You're doing too much. Just get us to Mars, man. Get us to Mars. Yep. That's Focus all, on yeah, that. That's all we need to do. Just get to Mars. Get, get yeah. Starlink up so we can get some good, cheap internet all over the, the world. My buddy at work go. thinks his master plan is just to become the con- or ruler of Mars. That's what he wants well, to right. do. Hey, that's, a, that's Well, he already sent his I, car out that way. I'm so. sorry. I don't even think he's human. I think the dude's an alien or some sort. Like, he looks hey, funny to me. Yeah. I, but hey. he does look way more human than Zuckerberg. That's true. Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not even going to talk on this. We're streaming this on I'm Facebook right now. We should wax. probably not <laughs> yeah. say I'm going to say about him. I'm not putting. And we're on, on Twitter wax. too, so don't worry. We're already off the Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> the name was heard, and then uh, we already got taken off. If uh, I, I don't even know where I was, where I was going to go with things. So <laughs> next oh, break, uh, Men in Black. Have you guys seen the scene where like they show like they're saying that all these celebrities are, mm-hmm. are aliens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's that seems a little bit more true than we. Than we yes, wanna, I agree. People want to. So I always said I think he is. Inside Elon Musk is just this little person operating this whole body machine that he's got going on. And inside the voice of land, we're well off the rails. So, yeah, time to take our <laughs> break. We will uh, break down, well, I guess I will. I'm going to allow Jay and Peter, a little different style of a final segment, I'm going to allow them to ask questions because the World Cup is in one week. I am so excited. I don't have to worry about American football. Yes, it'll be happening, but my focus will be so on the real football that's played around the world and the biggest tournament, the biggest sporting event going on. It only happens every four years, and it's specific. Like it's not just specific to one sport, but it only involves one sport, and that is the World Cup happening in Qatar starting on Sunday. We will talk about that next right here on The Voice of Land on the Big Play Network. Are you looking for a career in manufacturing? Vector Technical has you covered. Vector Technical is a 28-year-old staffing firm that has partnered with some of the biggest and the best companies throughout Northeastern Ohio. The recruiters at Vector Technical will coach you through the entire job process and will help you land an opportunity that you are truly excited about. Vector does not add any additional fees and offers benefits as well as free online skills training through Penn Foster. To learn more, visit www.vectortechnicalinc.com and make sure to check out our job board to see a full list of our current opportunities and apply. Welcome back to the show that will talk about anything. Even though it's the Browns post-game show for the Big Play Network, this is the voice of land. Kevin Arnold, always positive, Jay. Audio, it is a Sunday night. We got the Browns out of the way. We got the rest of the league out of the way. We even got the Cavs out of the way, even though they're only down a l- 11 it, now. Is that is 11. That 11? No, that's 21. Um, yeah. <laughs> 9978. Yes. Math is hard. Man, uh, <laughs> mental math is not my thing. Give me a calculator. <laughs> I'm one of those weird ones that mental math is just like, it's just up here. Like, people always tell me, oh, you're not using a calculator? I'm like, yeah, I am. It's up in my brain. I don't so, know. no, I got ADD and dyslexia. Like, it is the worst thing in oh, the geez. world for <laughs> me to try to do mental math. I'm like, yeah, just give me a paper I, and I'll do this. I've described this to you guys before. Like, I'm one of those people that. It, the scene from Hangover where they go to the table to win money. I think, what was it, the 21? Mm-hmm. Uh, blackjack. Blackjack table. Uh, and, like, you start to see, and you see it in all these other, you like, all movies about, like, geniuses. You see the math all going around them in that yeah, scene. Yeah. I, sometimes I feel like I go through that moment with myself. But, and, sure. Hey, look, we'll talk about anything. We just talked about math for two minutes. This is the voice of land where we literally talk about anything. Anybody wants Kevin to come Arnold, on Kevin Arnold, the Rain Man over here. <laughs> right, let's not go that far. <laughs> Kevin Arnold, the soccer fan. There, now you're talking. And the World Cup does start coming up on Sunday. I believe it is Iran. No, not Iran. It is Qatar who will open it up. Every time the host country will open it up. It'll be interesting to see in 2026 with three, uh, three countries hosting it uni- as a unified group, how they do that. Like who, which country gets the opening game. It better be the United States. But... If anybody wants wants to help, if you want to pay, like, instead of paying to be verified on Twitter, you want to pay eight bucks a month to something else, help me go to the World Cup somewhere. Around. Philadelphia, I think, is the closest spot. That's part of my bucket list. So, you know, just, just laying that out there if anybody's anybody's listening and wants to help me out with that. Hey, Got- man, if our sponsors keep up, maybe we could pay for you to go. Hey, I, I would love that. If we get other sponsors on, they want me to cover the World Cup. You know. <laughs> Anybody's got another? Like, you got the mic. I'll bring the camera. Any, 
we got a producer. Anybody else has got a mic with a podcast that everybody does these days. You want to? You need someone to break down. But the they don't up. have an AI system like we do. That's that's true. That's true. Now, so I wanted to do this because when Peter and I we do stuff with CBC TV, and Peter was just out uh, covering Kirtland, just taking out who were they playing Dalton last night. Yes. Are they from the Worcester Dal- area? Dalton. 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 It's a soft A. Apparently, yes. And they were very specific about very that. Very specific about that. Yeah. I, Dalton that, from Worcester? Is it, was it the I Worcester? think it's somewhere down, somewhere down there. Okay. I like. I was trying to, like, I was tuning in for, for most of it. And, of course, Double A, Anthony Alford, friend of ours here on the show, and CBC TV, he was calling it with uh, Logan Potowski, who was – he does stuff for John Carroll. He's a Kirtland grad. Mm-hmm. He is one of the better up-and-coming young play-by-play guys. Like, if you want to learn what it means to do play-by-play and someone that's kind of your own age, if you're young in the business, don't go to me. I'm t- <laughs> don't go to me. Go to Logan because he is he is uh, definitely someone to learn from. Are you guys getting, just before we get into the World Cup, are you guys getting one more game for the regional final? Uh, we don't know. It all depends on whether or not Spectrum is going to, if Spectrum picks up the game, then we won't, but I believe Kirtland is the only, uh, maybe the only CVC team. I don't no, know. Or Perry, Perry, Perry won too. Yeah, they beat, um, they beat Garraway, Sugar okay. Creek Garraway. They beat them 27-17 in the Battle of the Pirates. Oh. So uh, I think uh, Perry's Perry's taking on the number one seed in their division. When they're Division 5, Region 17, Kirtland is the number one. They take on Magador, who yep. beat Cuyahoga Heights. And that'll be at Nordonia again. Yeah. So, they'll be at Nord- so they just I'm kind of kind of hoping, like, <laughs> hoping I get that one because it's not, it's not like we went out to Niles last year. Niles, yeah. was, that was a haul. The Perry one's not too far away, though, either, I don't think. Yeah, I'll have to check. If you go out to Niles, so. you got to get the Italian food out there. I heard it's phenomenal. I'll tell you a story later about Niles. All right. Okay. Yeah, we always. But I'll tell you another city. You guys say Magador. I just love the name of that city. I think it's one of the. I love saying Magador for some reason. I'm like, that's a cool city name. Like for me, it's Barberton. Barberton's another yeah. cool city name. Yeah. Like the only reason I, I was when we were looking for houses and you know outside of Wycliffe, the only reason we were looking in Barberton was just there was times like one of the ways we go to the in-laws. You got to go. I think it's 21. It offshoots from yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, from 77. And you go through Barberton, and I just, like, I don't know, I just started seeing the name, and they're known, their nickname is the Magics in the school district, so I, I just love saying Barberton. There if you I go. Can, if I can say Barberton a bunch, I'll, I'll just say Barberton. <laughs> um, so World Cup's coming up here. World Cup. And I know nothing about up. it. All right. So, so who are the top teams entering, like, who's your top four right now entering the World Cup? Because typically it's usually what, Brazil's usually Brazil. really good, Germany's usually pretty good. Brazil and they have, they should if they're not top of their group, like that's an utter shame. They are Group G, which you know there's, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight groups of four. So there's 32, 32 teams, and the top two teams of each group during group play, pool play, they move on. So you got to have the most points. So mm. yes, teams are gonna be allowed to tie. In the first three games, every every country is guaranteed three games, but not every country is guaranteed to move on to the knockout stage. Brazil is in Group G, and they have Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. Now, I will tell you this: the the countries that come out of Africa, like the when they have their African Nations Cup and, and those international teams, boy, are they fun to play. They are speed on the field. They are. As close as you can get to what indoor soccer is, like how fast that goes, how fast you have to play, boy, Cameroon, Ghana, uh, Nigeria, a lot of those teams, they are fun to watch, and their celebrations are some of the absolute best goal celebrations. So, But Brazil should come out of there. The other teams, the top teams, I mean, you're looking at probably Spain, Croatia, France, um, looking at some of their teams that are in um, what about Argentina? Are they another good see, soccer town usually? They're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this will be Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, the top two players of the last decade plus. And probably, arguably, the two best players of all, two of the best players of all time. If you got the top three, at least starting your Mount Rushmore, Mount, Mount Rushmore words are hard, but oh so fun, <laughs> of soccer, if you started one, 
the first three that you're going with are Messi, Ronaldo, and Pele. And then the argument for the Arnold. other four. No. <laughs> Not playing. The announcer. I wouldn't even put myself yeah, in. Yeah, I said so. Okay. Well, you – and then – I'm positive about it, dude. I, I get it. And, see, that's <laughs> that's an opinion that we that we don't agree on, but we can talk about. It's not <laughs> stupid like we talked about so. earlier. Um, but, yeah, those are probably the top teams. The only – the bigger problem with this World Cup is some of the top players – or some of the just some of the players that there were, this was going to be their first opportunity to go to the World Cup, they can't play because they're hurt, and they're hurt with one of those two week, like soft tissue injuries or that. Because any time the World Cup happens, it's in the summer, and you have like two or three weeks to kind of get get yourself right coming out of the season. Once all the club uh, club leagues stop and all the tournaments are done for playing with your club, now once you go with your country, there's time to get right to get in training, get it. Be able to go even if you're hurt with those two week injuries. Some of those guys don't get to go because the Premier League just ended today. They just went on break today. That's one week from the World Cup. If someone got hurt this weekend, they're probably not playing. And they're going to their dream of playing in a World Cup, which any soccer player growing up, that is your dream, is to be good enough. Well, you were gonna say something about Messi and the other guy. Yeah, so to but to bring that back around, I mean, like Messi and Ronaldo are playing, like, but Argentina with Messi at the helm has not had nearly the success that Messi has had on the club scene, and he has failed on the international tournament level. As of late, they've played well in the South American tournaments and some of the other uh, smaller international tournaments that they've been in. I don't know if they have enough to get there, but well, they... let's say Messi led Argentina and they win the World Cup. Would that like just I think catapult that would, him up? That would cement like... his legacy. I think he's the best of all time. I say he's the best of all time. Other people go with Ronaldo, and even though Ronaldo's on my squad, I like what Messi does more because he's the all-around guy. That's why I like LeBron more than Jordan. Yes, Jordan could do other things, but I've what I've seen from LeBron, he has done so many different things, affects the game so many different ways. That's what Messi does. Messi is that point guard that can go get his own, and he will make you look like a fool as a defender going to get his own, but he will also set up his teammates. He will get them He'll involved. make everyone else around him better. Make everyone else around him better. He just he hasn't been able to do that consistently enough for Argentina like he did at Barcelona and now PSG, which plays in France on the, on the club level. Well, let's bring this home, and I need a wrap-up of what the U.S. team is going to look like. So They don't develop our players very well usually. Not on the men's side. They haven't. Now, we're, we're in what is so-called the golden age of American soccer. And that is because we have so many guys in their prime or just before their prime year. And your prime years are tend to be 27 to 32, tends to be that kind of window age-wise. We have guys that are still younger than that. We're probably going to have one of the, if not the youngest team at the World Cup. We have teenagers, 20-year-olds going to the World Cup but they're playing for some of the be- in the best leagues around the country, around the world. They're playing for some of the best teams. Christian Pulisic, um, Captain America, plays for Chelsea. Is he used right? Different conversation, different day. But he is supposed to be the leader of this team. You have other people playing in the top German league. You have other people playing in the top Spanish league. You have plenty of Americans playing in the Premier League, which is the top league in all the world, I would argue. Be- definitely the best league in all of Europe. And if you are starting for a team that is playing in the Premier League and impacting that team, you should be on this squad. There are questions about the decisions that were made, who's here, who's not. But this team needs to make it to the knockout stages. And once you make it to the knockout stages, that means you're one of the top two in your group and anything can happen. Just like we talked about the baseball playoffs. You get to the dance, anything can happen. Who's in our group? So our group is, I believe it's Group B. Yes, Group B. So we have Iran, Wales, and England. And the big matchup in the group is going to be the day after Thanksgiving. So Black Friday, 2 p.m., USA, England, in Qatar. USA actually takes those red coats down. Another, uh, I guess, the reincarnation of the American or the, the, the Revolutionary War going on on the on a pitch in Qatar of sorts the soccer version at least uh, USA will play England they actually start with Wales on Monday they play at two o'clock that day 
yes, there'll be games going on at like 5 a.m. with the time difference and everything, but there'll be plenty of games throughout the day, and I'm sure Fox will replay some stuff later on. If you have YouTube TV, the brilliant thing about that is there is a when you go to record World Cup, there is an option to record everything. Guess what I did? <laughs> Record everything because I want to watch all of the different countries. I want to watch all the different games or at least tune into so- as many of them as I can. Instead of streaming shows, I'm probably going to be streaming soccer matches. I'm going to have to watch a soccer match with you one of these days. Yeah. I mean, and I, can... I need to watch a game too where you're invested into it so I can see you going nuts. I mean, these, these World Cup. Games I, I mean, are... I see how you act when, you, when Browns games are close and are meaningful. Mm-hmm. I want to see how you act when there's soccer Dude. involved. Oh man, if you if you could have seen me win, I think it was 2010, and, and we'll wrap it up after this. The USA was playing Algeria, I want to say, and it was the last game of the group stage. They had to win to get to the knockout stage. I think it was it was tied one one, and in soccer you play 90 minutes, but you actually play more than 90 minutes because. The referee, while the clock continues to run, there is a third official or fourth official that is keeping track of the average amount of time that is not being where soccer action is not actually happening. Like how much is just dead space time? Add that to the end of the half. There may have been like five or six minutes added to the end of this. And I remember the play like it was yesterday, and I can see it in my mind. Tim Howard, one of the best goalkeepers the USA has ever had for the international stage. I actually remember that name. He collected a I think a ball rolled into the box. He collected it, and immediately, just like a long outlet pass from Kevin Love, or when you see it in basketball, cups it in his hand, throws it out to midfield to Landon Donovan, who you know starts dribbling down. U.S. is pressing. Clint Dempsey gets a shot and gets blocked. Landon Donovan start kept trailing the play, finished it, and. I mean, pandemonium, absolute pandemonium in the stadium. And to not have the that for the U.S. back in 2018 when they didn't qualify and now being like two World Cups removed until we play on Monday, Monday is going to mean so much to me when I see the USA actually in the World Cup. We got to go beat Wales. We got to get the, the win to start things off. Come on, USA. I don't – I am I will criticize – the roster afterwards, we got to be all behind this squad. If you're going to be, if you're going to tune in, you want to root for your country, get behind the USA. Let's see what these young guys can do. They're going to have to step up. Coach Burhalter is going to have to put them in the right spot. But uh, it's going to be a fun time. I'm telling you, if you've never watched soccer before, just tune into a half. That's all I'm asking because you will see, even if it's nil nil, zero zero, or one nil, a one nil game. You will see why the game is so beautiful, and you'll start to understand the nuances. Or, hey, take up FIFA 22 or 23. Take up the video game. That's what got other people into into soccer, too. I'm just asking you to give it a try. If you're not into soccer after giving it a try, so be it. But at least give it a try. I would love to build more of a following of soccer in this country. You don't have to give up American football. You don't have to give up basketball, baseball. I haven't. I am just as intense with all of it, and I have Cleveland running through my veins. But I got soccer running through my veins, too, and I just ask for you to give it a chance. I mean, dude, I'm no soccer fan. I told you I'll give it a chance. told you and our, this is our show. We'll talk about whatever we want, and I know how much you love soccer. Me and Peter are all about you talking soccer, dude. And, have at it. And I'm sure we'll be, you know, we'll definitely be talking crunch on here, too. Cleveland Crunch coming up. They got games coming up at the IX Center. That's going to be a lot of fun, too. I think we're going to have to get Riconia to go to a game with me. It's going yes. to be, that's going to be one of my goals. Yes, get Riconia out to a game, and trust me, I mean, Riconia's got, got one he's of He's fun things. no matter where you go with that guy. I know, but, he, <laughs> but he's also got – he's one of the most impactful people on the city, and he's got, like, one of the biggest voices. Mitchell, there. Someone I will see him to. tomorrow before we let go. Tomorrow I'll be going to the Rec Connect for uh, – Okay, Rec to Connect, yeah. Uh, Andre Knott's wife does it all, and it's for just – Helping families that have special needs kids, mm. like our niece that we babysit. Such a good cause. And helps them get out. And Yeah, we're, uh, I'll be at the VIP lounge for that tomorrow. And if you guys got a chance, get down there and pay, buy a ticket. Uh, Rec to Connect on Twitter, I believe. If you can't, find Rec- Andre Knotts. 
Twitter handle, and he'll have it posted He's on there. He's got somewhere. plenty of tweets on it. And it might be rectedconnect.com, but I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to say that for sure. So just go on follow. Twitter. It's RC2 Foundation. Yes. And or you can go to at Dre Not on Twitter and I he's can't gotten, believe I remembered that. <laughs> he's gotten, he, he's, that was that was pretty good at the end of the show. Uh, but Dre, uh, Andre Not has all the all the information there as well. But for always positive, Jay, if you guys get a, get a chance, go say hi. Get out to Rec to, Rec to Connect. It's going to be a great event. So go see always positive, Jay. For Peter Tellup, Kevin Arnold, reminding all of you: don't let anyone ever tell you it's just a game. We truly love you all, 3,000. Jay? Don't talk about it. Be about it. And live life. All gas, no breaks. We'll see you all possibly next week or in two weeks. Stay tuned at VTL underscore pod on social media. We'll keep you updated when the next show is. But until then, go USA soccer. USA. USA. <laughs> we'll see you next time on The Voice and Land.